The Oakland Athletics flamethrower Mason Miller is currently the most dominant closer in baseball. But he's not just the best closer or relief pitcher. As of right now, on a per inning basis, he's the best pitcher in all of baseball. Goodness. Your best, my best. Ding, ding. That's the tardy bell, Mr. Soto. We are going to need to see the hall pass. This guy has highlight reel type stuff every time he steps on the mound and is can't miss TV no matter if you're an Oakland A's fan or just a fan of baseball. His four seam fastball on average is the fastest in the league at 100.7 miles per hour. And he also threw the fastest single pitch on the year at 103.7 miles per hour. His four seam fastball has actually averaged 101.5 and two strike counts to start the year, which is one and a half miles an hour faster than second place in Ryan Helsley. His four seam fastball currently has a 50% whiff rate, and that's even with hitters sitting on that pitch as he throws his four seam fastball 59.1% of the time. Yep. There's just no chance. Mason Miller continues to attack at the top of the zone. He's about an hour and a half late. His main secondary pitch is a slider that averages 87.4 miles per hour. And while he has an elite fastball, it's the slider that has the higher perceived value as he's limited hitters to just a 105 batting average and an expected batting average of 056 against this pitch. He also has a 50% whiff rate on his slider. His percentile rankings compared to the rest of the league are an absolute joke. There is no one better with an expected ERA, expected batting average, fastball velocity, whiff rate, and strikeout rate. He's also in the 99th percentile in hard hit percentage, the 98th percentile in chase percentage, 92nd percentile in barrel percentage, and 90th percentile in average exit velocity. And as I mentioned, that slider is his most valuable pitch. It's in the 95th percentile as far as breaking run value. Mason Miller allowed two earned runs in his 2024 debut, and since then, he's pitched in nine games, 11 and a third innings pitched, seven for seven in save opportunities, no earned runs allowed, a 0.62 walks plus hits divided by innings pitched, a 58.5% strikeout rate, a 105 batting average against, a 24.4% swinging strike percentage. He's also not walking anybody with just a 7.3% walk rate. So far in 2024, he's pitched in 12 and a third innings and has racked up 25 strikeouts with just four walks. He's maintained a 1.46 ERA with a 0.892 whip. He currently has an 18.2 strikeouts per nine and a 2.9 walks per nine. That's right, he's averaging two strikeouts per inning pitched. And after his last outing against the Orioles, he now has nine consecutive relief outings with two or more strikeouts. Only two other pitchers in baseball had five or more consecutive outings with multiple strikeouts. And believe it or not, his expected statistics are even better than what the top line results are showing. Mason burst onto the scene in 2023 as a starting pitcher for the Athletics, shows up in 2024 as the most dominant closer in baseball, but he's faced his fair share of adversity along the way, including being diagnosed with type 1 diabetes at the age of 20. So let's get into the story of Mason Miller. But before we do, if you're a fan of this type of content and you would like to support the Couch GM, then if you or someone you know is thinking of buying, selling, or refinancing, make sure to reach out to the Couch GM to hit a home run with your mortgage financing needs. You can visit lenderconnorweb.com to get in touch. And for real estate, you can connect with former national soccer team member and current real estate standout, Laura Schott, by emailing laurashott at windermere.com. Now, let's get into it. Mason Miller grew up in Bethel Park, Pennsylvania, which is about 30 minutes south of Pittsburgh. He was homeschooled growing up, but would play sports at Bethel Park High School. And while he was offered a walk-on at a couple D2 and D1 schools, he decided to stay closer to home and attend Waynesburg University. He would say that he always figured his future was finance and not fastballs. And it was his goal to be the first in his immediate family to get a college degree. He would play four seasons as a Yellow Jacket at Waynesburg, 
And through those first two seasons as a starting pitcher, he had a decent arm, but just a seven ERA. And during that summer, he got a finance internship at a local hospital, which would require a drug test. Initially, the hospital thought he was diluting his sample. But upon further evaluation, the doctor saw that his blood sugar was at an alarming level and he would be admitted to the UPMC Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh that same day. It was there that he would be diagnosed with type 1 juvenile diabetes at just 20 years old. The results were confusing for him, but things started to add up. At 6'5", he had dropped from 180 pounds down to 155 and he was losing some of that stamina and velocity on the fastball. Mason adjusted his diet accordingly and he packed on the weight. At 6'5", he built up to 180 and then 200 pounds, and heading into his junior year at Waynesburg, he was ready to go. He was now sitting in the low 90s, topping out at 95, and as he would say, he dominated from his first pitch junior year. He had a 1.86 ERA and struck out 97 batters in 67 and two-thirds innings as a starting pitcher. Opponents hit just 173 off of him, and he pitched six complete games, four of them were shutouts. His senior year would be canceled after two games due to COVID, and with an extra year of eligibility, he decided to make a move. He now had D1 opportunities and he decided to go play at Gardner-Webb University in North Carolina. He would impress in his final year in college, starting 14 games, 15 appearances, pitching 92 and two-thirds innings with 121 strikeouts to 30 walks, a 3.30 ERA, a 1.11 whip, and an opponent's batting average of 210. Head coach Jim Chester stated that MLB teams were calling him every day asking about Mason, and he was projected to go relatively early in the 2021 MLB draft. He would be selected in the third round, 97th overall by the Oakland A's, and would begin his relatively quick ascent to the big leagues. Mason only pitched in six games in 2022 across three different levels. He had 14 innings pitched, a 3.86 ERA, and a ridiculous 0.786 whip, 16.1 strikeouts per nine, and just 1.9 walks per nine. Mason would start the 2023 season in double A. After one game pitched, he would be moved up to triple A. And then after just one start in triple A, it was announced that he would be getting the call. It is big league debut season. Swing and a miss on a high fastball, 100 miles an hour. In his MLB debut, he would go four and a third innings, giving up four hits, two earned runs, and a walk, along with five strikeouts. And he would become just the 10th pitcher since the debut of StatCast to throw 15 pitches above 100 miles per hour. As a starter in 2023, he utilized four different pitches with a four-seam fastball, his slider, a cutter, and a changeup until after his start against the Royals on May 8th, it was reported that Miller was dealing with elbow tightness. He would later be diagnosed with a mild strain of the UCL, the ulnar collateral ligament, and he would be shut down from throwing, later being transferred to the 60-day IL. He would record just four starts in the big leagues before he hit the injured list. On September 6, 2023, he would be activated from the injured list, this time in a relief role. It was also announced that offseason that he would make the transition to the bullpen in an effort to extend his longevity. Which brings us to his current day dominance. Velocity in the game against Gunnar Henderson. Yeah, Checked it there and he absolutely wins. Here's the pitch and how about the Oakland A's? Mason Miller. Does. Thanks for coming out. 102 all the way. Here's a recent outing versus the Yankees in which he struck out Anthony Volpe, Juan Soto, and Aaron Judge with fastballs. And then here's a home plate animation showing just how hard it is to hit this fastball. So be on the lookout for Mason Miller the rest of the way. And for more content like this, make sure to like and subscribe to the Couch GM on YouTube and find me across social medias for short form content. And we'll see you next time.